And then the Sukkus mob, again, is from just really believing that if something's good, people will look at it. Like, they'll want to stop and they'll want to pay attention to it. And very often, I would describe my ideas, you know, like, how can I tell a producer that, like, Betty Boop is my spirit guide? You know, it's like, I look at her as this power femme who, immigrant person who, like, navigates through the world with her femme values and has an episode and, like, goes through something insane and figures out how to deal with it. And I just love the Fleischer brothers and their weird surreality and the way they're commenting on, like, Betty's experience. And she experiences America, undoubtedly. She's like a Jewish girl in a new world and a liberated woman. And so I wanted to do these pieces, community-based residencies, that were sort of based on Betty Boop. And at the time, Susan Hoffman Watts was playing Betty Boop on the trumpet. And so the workshop would be like, she would lead a klezmer workshop with the people in town, and then I would do sort of like, what's the story that needs to be told here? What's the conflict? We would construct the episode, and then we'd wind Betty Boop into it. And, you know, music, and it was sensational. No one was wanting to hire us to do this res. We did it once, and it was, or twice, it was killing. But none of these producers could understand, like, what a great way into Jewish pop culture and materials and feminism and problem solving and contemporary stuff in Yiddish this could be. So I said, you know what? I can't wait for people to understand this because I know how good it is. So I'm just going to do it. And I'm going to do it on the street in New York because. There's endless amounts of people there. And if it's good, people will look at you. So that was one thing. I was like, hmm, I just have to do this on the street. And then someone, I think it was Amichai Laulavi, was talking about Sukkis and like the Midrash on Sukkis and how it's all about rain dances and raves because Hadassah Gross, Amichai Laulavi is so amazingly creative. And I got, the, he put the bee in my bonnet about that. And then, I started reading more about it, and then I started looking at all the posters on the walls and these Yiddish Hasidic neighborhoods, and they got all these shows going on in entertainments for Sukkot. And I started realizing, oh, joy is mandated at this holiday. This holiday is undertouched. But these other Yiddish carnies, and I consider myself a street performer, a low-life puppeteer, you know, with the legacy of the uncle and the weightlifting, you know, I have a right to step into this theater of operations and that they're in, and they're Yiddish theater makers, and so am I. And so... I started checking out what they were doing, and that really influenced the Sukkot mob. And we've done it for several years, and it's a mob, intergenerational, of course. 20 people, we wear uh, fedoras that are white. We wear suit jackets. We look like yeshiva people, but we're all green for, in honor of the holiday. And we have white fedoras, so it's a little more Sammy Davis Jr., a little bit more Vegas. But I do think yeshiva people look marvelous. But we don't copy any of their religious things, because, of course, they have value. And we, it's never about mocking what people believe in. That's not the interest. The interest in the project is to experience joy, to learn about, and like, it's so much fun to make carny entertainments. I mean, there's nothing I like better, and that they should be about contemporary stuff, and in a Yiddish milieu, and using Yiddish language and, and materials. And the best artists in the world have joined. So in the middle of it, you know, we'll tell these wacky Betty Boop-like stories based on all sort of trad materials and newfound things, water libations and all kinds of things. And like the great cantor, Judith Berkson, in the middle of it, will give a concert. And the rest of the singers who have included Sarah Gordon and Michelle Miller and, you know, all these marvelous uh, Jewish queers from New York, these great performers, and Michael Wingrad and Jake Shulman Mint and Dan Blacksburg and Kenny Wallison and Jessica Lurie and, you know, uh, Avi Fox Rosen and... You know, all these interesting people from the Jewish world. Oh, Galit Dardashti coached us in, one year we did Yiddish-Iranian circus entertainments because there was all this saber rattling about bombing Iran. It's like, I don't think so. And also, like, multiculturally speaking, like, it's this great center of Jewish life. And so we sort of partnered with our Iranian Jewish friends and learned songs about rain and Farsi. And we're like, yes, we like to sing Yiddish-Iranian folk music at Hanukkah. And we, we played in day schools and... Um, we were role modeling principal disobedience to, to Jewish kids and sort of saying like, yo, they're shutting down everything. The Bush agenda is on. They won't let you protest the war. You've got this homeland security thing. It doesn't have to be this way, kids. Like, you can think outside the box. You're allowed to think critically. And so we would go in there as this mob of adults and just like do these amazingly beautiful, marvelously scored, weird shows that just left everybody feeling extremely, probably confused, but also very free. 